You know what's funny? We're living through this massive wave of longevity hype. Longevity supplements are everywhere. You've got NMN, you've got resveratrol, you've got spermidine. Every week there's a new secret to aging better. And I know I'm guilty of talking about these things. I talk about it a lot because some of them really do work and they absolutely have potential. They're not the problem. The problem is that people will chase the shiny expensive options and they'll overlook the one compound that's affordable, it's accessible, and it's backed by decades of data. It's the one thing people already know about. And it's the same thing most people brush off as a gym bro supplement. It's creatine. Now, a lot of people have started to accept that creatine has cognitive benefits. Okay, the conversation is finally expanding there, but almost nobody, even the people deep into the longevity world, talk about creatine as a longevity tool. Instead, they'll reach for the shiny, expensive products that may or may not move the needle while overlooking something cheap, accessible, and incredibly well studied. So let me lay out where we're going with this video because there's some really cool stuff. First, we're going to talk about creatine as an actual energy buffer, a stabilizer for your mitochondria as you age. And that's what matters more than anything any exotic compound with a cool name. We're also going to dive into the muscle brain axis because your muscles literally signal to your brain and creatine supports that communication. After that, we'll talk muscular aging, bone density, and inflammation. Okay, the data in older adults is really wildly strong. Then we're going to take it home with what might be the most unexpected part, how dietary creatine intake connects to biological age and epigenetic aging. So let's start with that whole energy buffering idea, okay, because that's the foundation for everything that we're going to talk about. There was a review that was published in July of 2025, brand new, in Frontiers in Nutrition, and it described creatine as a guardian of cellular bioenergetics. What does that mean? It's not because it's doing anything magical, but it's because it supports the ATP system when things get stressful. As we age, stress on the cell, metabolic stress, oxidative stress, it all becomes the norm. We're stressed. And here's what's happening under the hood. When creatine stores go up, phosphocreatine availability increases. Phosphocreatine is your rapid response energy reservoir. It keeps the ATP levels stable when your cells would otherwise dip into an energy deficit, and it reduces the buildup of oxidative byproducts that normally rise when mitochondria start to struggle, which they do all the time when we're older. So in simple terms, creatine gives your cells more breathing room. So instead of falling off of a cliff energetically, which you'll feel as fatigue or fogginess or early workout burnout, right? Like at the beginning of a workout, you're like, I'm not going to make it through. Your cells now have a buffer that absorbs that stress. You've probably had days where out of nowhere, your tank just empties at 2 p.m. Or maybe days where the same workout that felt easy last week is crushing you. That's the instability I'm talking about, the inconsistency. And creatine is one of the cleanest ways to support that system. Now, we've laid the groundwork on energy buffering, but let's talk about this new thing, this muscle brain axis. This is one of my favorite areas because it reframes how we think about aging. Okay, that same 2025 review discussed how muscle acts like an endocrine organ. It releases molecules, these things like BDNF, arisin, IGF-1. These aren't just workout markers. These directly support neuroplasticity, cognition, and even long-term neuroprotection. So creatine enters the picture by improving the muscle energy capacity and contraction efficiency. So when your muscles have more available energy, they contract more effectively. And the more effectively they contract, the more of those beneficial myokines, those things that they secrete, they release. So this is like, from a practical standpoint, <laughs> creatine's helping your muscles talk to your brain in a stronger, more consistent Way. And you know this feeling. When you're training consistently, and especially when you feel strong in your training, your mood's better, your focus is sharper, you feel more capable, you just feel like your feet are on the ground and you're solid and you're grounded. That's not just endorphins. As a matter of fact, endorphins barely do anything. That's an actual signal cascading from the muscle to the brain. And you don't need crazy fancy creatine, okay? Like you can use simple monohydrate. It's the inexpensive stuff, basic stuff. I put a link down below for a huge discount, up to 54% off the creatine that I use. It's a company called Create. They have some creatine gummies that are hands down the best tasting creatine gummies out there. And they use allulose. And allulose helps make it so that if you have sugar in the system, it lowers the effect of the sugar. So it uses the same receptor. So it ends up transporting the allulose and less of the sugar. You still have a couple grams of glucose in these gummies to help the creatine uptake. Creatine works really well with salt and with a tiny bit of glucose for proper uptake. But if you combine it with allulose, you potentially cancel some of that glucose out. Now, Create 
it also has stick packs too. And there's a link down below for those as well. So you can get straight monohydrate stick packs, but the gummies are kind of a fun way if you're like looking for something that tastes good, that's going to give you a, a net positive. So that link is for up to 54% off from Create Creatine. Now let's move into the musculoskeletal aging piece, because this is where longevity becomes very real and very fast. So sarcopenia and osteopenia aren't abstract ideas. They're two of the biggest drivers of just general decline as we age. They break down our metabolic health, they add insulin resistance because we have less muscle, everything else tends to snowball from the loss of muscle. There was a narrative review in the Journal of Clinical Medicine that looked at creatine in older adults in this context, and it broke things down into muscle, bone, and inflammation. The findings were shockingly incredible. Across multiple meta-analysis, older adults who supplemented creatine while resistance training gained roughly 1.3 kilograms more lean mass than those who trained without it. Not to mention the consistent improvements in strength and metabolic health. And on the bone side, creatine improved variables that were associated with fall risk. So as we get older, things like leg strength and performance in like what is called a sit to stand test. These things really, really matter. And it may not be hitting you hard now, but it might hit you hard in 20 years. So trust me, it's important now. There was even evidence that it helped attenuate bone mineral loss when it was combined with resistance training. So mechanistically, here's what's happening. By increasing these creatine stores, creatine is enabling faster energy regeneration during the muscle contraction. So it's allowing you to push more volume. That number one driver of muscle growth is really just helping you get more out of it and maintain intensity. So you're not having a decline. You're getting constant signal. On top of that, we have a lot of emerging data showing that creatine is influencing what's called myogenic transcription factors, meaning it supports the signaling pathways involved in muscle growth itself. It's not just making you stronger. It's literally helping you build tissue. So the takeaway is simple. Creatine doesn't just let you work harder. It helps your body respond better to the hard work. And let's be real. Muscle is one of the strongest predictors of longevity. More muscle mass means a higher resting metabolic rate. So you stay leaner longer, better insulin sensitivity, better balance, greater physical resilience, potentially better immune system. And when we talk about falls being one of the biggest causes of mortality in older age, anything that protects strength and mobility is a longevity strategy, not a gym strategy. Point blank. The inflammation piece is equally important. Something I talk about all the time here. The same review noted preliminary evidence that creatine reduces markers of oxidative stress and the muscle protein breakdown. All right, so we're keeping chronic, low-grade inflammation low, and that is one of the biggest contributors that we have to extending health span. Inflammation is at the core of so many issues, whether you're young or old. Now that we've hit muscle and bone, let's talk brain and cognition, okay? Because this is where people finally start to notice that creatine isn't just about the gym, okay? There was a 2023 systematic review in nutrition reviews. This examined eight different randomized control trials on creatine and memory. Okay, the doses ranged from around two grams as a low dose all the way up to a mega dose of 20 grams, which might give you a little bit of uh, stomach and diarrhea issues, but it does work. The results were super clear. Creatine improved multiple measures of memory, forward recall, backward recall, what they call spatial memory, verbal recall, like remembering words. But the most interesting part was the difference between younger and older adults. Younger adults saw minimal changes, but older adults saw much bigger improvements. Why is this? Because cognitive aging is largely an energy problem. The brain demands constant ATP, constant energy. And with age, mitochondrial efficiency declines, neurons struggle to maintain that energy production, and creatine increases the brain creatine stores. And this is giving neurons more access to literally Literally immediate energy. So it's reducing the vulnerability to energy dips. So we have all this evidence in humans and in animals showing that creatine increases what's called CREB activation in the hippocampus. This is the part of the brain directly associated with memory. Okay, this is a key player in these pathways. So from a simple practical standpoint, creatine is giving your brain more headroom, more stability, more resilience to the dips that feel like fog. Okay, you like those foggy days where you just feel like your brain isn't working, that's what this is. It's mental hesitation. It's slow processing, manifesting in brain fog. So finally, if we talk about the part that still blows people's minds, it's biological age. There was a study again in 2025. It was published in Lifestyle Genomics, and it looked at dietary creatine intake in nearly 5,000 people. It compared this to epigenetic clocks like Grim Age, uh, another one called Grim Age 2, 
And these are some of our best predictors of mortality risk that we have. And what they found was really wild. It was fascinating. Higher dietary creatine intake was associated with lower predicted mortality risk. Each additional gram of creatine per day correlated with roughly a one point improvement in these epigenetic markers. Again, it's observational, so we're not going to jump to causation, but the mechanisms fit with all the other stuff we're talking about. Here's the thing though. Your body's using a ton of methyl groups to synthesize creatine internally. It actually takes quite a bit of energy. When you take in more creatine from your diet, your body doesn't have to produce as much. This frees up methyl donors. So we have things like SAM, which helps maintain DNA and RNA and histone methylation. This is the very process that keeps your epigenome stable. Okay, so that's how this is working. Because creatine is supporting the ATP stability, you're reducing mitochondrial dysfunction. You're lowering oxidative stress and you're reducing the upstream signals that accelerate biological aging. So things like oxidative stress and cellular senescence. So what does that mean in real life? And first, dosing doesn't need to be complicated. For most people, five grams per day is enough to saturate the muscle. 10 grams plus supports brain creatine stores and gives you kind of an added bonus of a little extra muscle boost. You don't need to load it. You don't need to cycle it. Consistency matters more than timing. And second, creatine isn't just a training day supplement. The longevity benefits that we're talking about, the energy buffering, the brain support, the methylation relief, all these things happen on rest days too. So taking it daily is what allows those systems to stay more stable and saturated as you get older. Thirdly, if we pair creatine with resistance training, that's where the return really compounds. So even modest or small amounts of strength training, you amplify this muscle brain signaling and the bone protection not to mention all the metabolic resilience that creatine supports. So they don't just work a little bit synergistically, they compound on each other. You don't need extreme workouts. You need regular muscle contraction as a signal. So just getting tension on the muscle. And finally, this is one of the rare supplements where older adults may benefit even more than younger ones, especially when it gets into the cognition piece. So when it comes down to like being able to maintain fatigue resistance and energy and brain energy, older people do better with it. So you could actually afford to take more if you're over 40. You could take 10, 15, 20 grams per day if you build up to it and your stomach can handle it. It isn't about chasing performance peaks. It's about protecting capacity over time so you have that consistent energy that you want to have. So when you zoom out, this picture about creatine becomes crystal clear. People chase longevity hacks, they chase trendy compounds, they chase supplements with cool names, and it ends up costing them a fortune. Meanwhile, creatine is dirt cheap, it's accessible, it's insanely well studied, it quietly supports energy buffering, it helps that brain muscle communication, it helps with muscle mass, with bone health, bone density, cognition, inflammation, mitochondrial resilience, immune system, and even the stability of your actual biological age and epigenetic clock, and it's like sense compared to some of these other ones. And what's fascinating is that creatine doesn't have to work alone. In another video, I break down a compound that amplifies creatine's effects in the brain by improving how creatine is actually used, especially in neural tissue. So when you combine these two, you actually unlock serious cognitive and neurological benefits that creatine on its own can't fully deliver on. So that video is right here. It helps really break it down well. I highly recommend if you're interested in creatine in the brain, you check that video out right here. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow.